Clink has actually kind of grown on me since I did the video on the worst designs of Generation 5. That was over a year ago at this point. I, I see now how it has some more personality, but I still see many problems with it. I don't like Pokemon that are too mechanical, although I, I, I guess that's just a, a personal preference. I think the main problem is that as it evolves, it's just more gears. Although the, the like second clink face disappears. It just goes from two gears to three gears to four gears and then a, a, a ring sort of thing. But it is just the same thing, but with more pieces added to it. And I don't feel like that really adds anything interesting or unique to each stage in the line. I don't think I can make it really less mechanical without just not making it clink anymore. So it, it is still going to be fairly mechanical, but I'm going to try to make the design of each stage a little bit more unique. And I'm also going to try to make it so that uh, the line is really like building towards something and not just gears with more gears with more gears. I was asking for help on Twitter, looking for ideas and fellow YouTuber GatorX, uh, if you don't know their channel, you should go check them out. GatorX suggested that they should be clocks. And I actually really liked that idea. It, it fits with a kind of steampunk aesthetic that I had, was already kind of thinking of. I just hadn't figured out exactly how to do it. Kaiserius also suggested that maybe a Gigantamax Kling Clang would have uh, looked like a grandfather clock. And even though I'm not gonna go that far and design a Gigantamax Kling Clang, I liked the idea that it would build towards that, that it would go in that direction and eventually it would make sense. So that's definitely the direction we're gonna go in. And one of the reasons I really like the idea of making it a clock is that the Clink family, the whole Clink family, is supposed to be uh, generators, right? They're just a bunch of gears, but they somehow manage, they, they can somehow create energy on their own. Most mechanical clocks, you have to wind them up to keep them going. Uh, like a grandfather clock generally needs to be wound up uh, every once a week, basically. But there are wristwatches that use the movement of your hand to self-wind. So in a way, it's kind of like it's generating its own power. It's harnessing the power of, of your movement to wind up its spring, at, you know, and, and keep going continuously as long as you keep wearing the watch. Uh, so I really liked that idea. It seemed really fitting. I am not going to be able to make like an accurate representation of clockwork mechanism. Um, I'm not even going to try, really. I'm going to try to have some of the components uh, referenced or included in the design, but we're redesigning an entire family. And normally it takes three to four hours to do just a single redesign. And I don't want to be here for 12 hours, believe it or not. I have a, a moderately concrete idea of how to go about it. So I'm kind of just going to go for it. I'm going to be making these Pokemon mostly out of shapes rather than drawing freehand because their gears they need to be relatively precise. I'm going to make these more like actual clockwork wheels so they're gonna have some space in them. What, what the white is uh, it, it's just space. Okay I'm gonna put a face on it now and I had an idea giving it an expression that actually reflects the number of gears that it has in the design as a Roman numeral, so because Clink is only two gears, it would have something like that. Uh, and then, you know, in a, in the other evolutions, I think I will go with four and nine. One of the eyes will be a V, and one of the eyes will be an X. So I'll still put essentially the same nose, but no face. This is just a detached part of its body. Hello, Photoshop? Did Photoshop just crash? Did, don't, yep, Photoshop just crashed. This is what you recovered? I mean, I guess it's something, but... <laughs> we could give it a mouth. Uh, I don't know if the mouth really helps, but I'll leave it there for now. Uh, I'll take it off later if I, if I don't like it, but there you go. Actually, that looks all right. Maybe I'll position it a little bit differently, but actually here it looks really good. Now, 
one of the dilemmas that I was having in trying to figure out exactly the progression of the evolutionary family is that I really like the idea of the final stage having weights, having a, a nice big noticeable pendulum. Kind of like if it were a grandfather clock without the case or anything, so or, or we even without a face. I was envisioning it as like just a bunch of gears, but with weights and pendulum and some other stuff added on top of it. But the problem with that idea is what I was talking about earlier about how wristwatches have a mechanism of self-winding. The self-winding watches, they have this like big semi-circular weight that just kind of goes around half of the whole thing, bobs back and forth depending on your wrist movements and that's how it winds. The grandfather clock, it doesn't have that piece. You have to actually wind it manually like with a key. You know, along the same lines as a wind-up toy. Uh, also, if the clock has weights, then it doesn't have a spring, and the spring is how it would be automatically wound up. Like, I could go with a clang that is more based on the self-winding watch. It's a bit of a simpler looking design, just like on the face of it. It won't have visible weights or pendulums and stuff to complicate its silhouette. But then, if you take away that concept when it evolves into the final form, is that too weird? Because the grandfather clock doesn't generate its own power. Like, visually it makes sense because you have just two gears and then you have more gears uh, and, and this weight, and then you have even more gears and just, you know, all of these things like hanging from it and such. Visually it makes sense, but conceptually it doesn't really make sense to go from something that is more advanced that can like actually wind and power itself to something that is less advanced. So it's like, that's the main conundrum that I've had in coming up with exactly how this line is going to evolve. This one is going to have a spring. This one is supposed to be four gears. So that means I need to, I'm going to put an extra mini gear somewhere. That works. Just kind of to balance out the design a little more. And it's now four gears, which means that in the face gear, the hands can either function as a mustache or, uh, well, I guess I might have to reposition the eyes uh, a bit for that to work, but they can also work as eyebrows. Do I want the angry eyebrows to be the second stage or the last stage? I'm thinking that one of them will be like the middle stage or the final stage, uh, either clang or clang clang is going to have the, the mustache and the other one is going to have the eyebrows. Conceptually, does it make more sense for the final stage to be the one that is more aggressive because it's more pyro powerful or the one that is more uh, classy and refined because it is older? Here's another thing to consider, because both of them are going to have it anchored to the middle. They can, they can rather easily go from mustache to angry eyebrows. On the same Pokémon, I mean. This uh, semicircle at the bottom is something that can, that can move. I guess the mechanism of how it actually keeps the spring wound is, is uh, hidden in the back, but that's okay. I made a copy of Clang so that I can build Clang Clang from this one. Like, I guess I could just put gears that, like, don't actually seem to be attached to anything that are just kind of, like, part of the design in the background uh, in some way. Maybe I'll make a copy of this one and put it in the back here. Like, we don't need to know exactly what the functions of all these gears are. They don't need to all be properly interlocking gears. I just want there to be a good number of visible gears. This one will definitely have weights and pendulums, but I think I'll leave the gear organization like this. I'm just gonna recount one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. 
Yeah, most of the research that I did, they had mainsprings rather than weights. This one's gonna have both, but that's just because I feel like that's what works more nicely visually. I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. I want the ring from the original design to be incorporated somehow. It doesn't make sense to have a horizontal ring on a clock, but I could put something in the back. I guess it also helps to give it a, a, a bit more of that, like, this is a clock look. You know what? This is a clock. <laughs> uh, the symmetry should actually be tw be 12 point. And then that way, like, each spike on the circle in the back will represent an hour. So, with it or without it. Background ring already makes it look a lot better. I like what the ring gives the design more overall cohesion. Yeah. Okay, in that case, I think I'm ready to start drawing some lines. To make things a little bit more interesting, I feel like I should give them a little bit of perspective. Those of you who have heard me talk in the past about the different brushes that I use uh, and how I like to use a rougher brush to make things look more organic. In this case, I'm using a smoother brush to make things actually look less organic because I think that's important for the look of Clink and family. You know, I'm actually going to make these eyes. Uh, I'm going to draw them with the rough brush after all. So at least the eyes can be a little bit more organic. Uh, I need to redo all these lines. Oh well. For me, it actually seems much nicer when, when the thick line is the border between the Pokemon and nothingness, whereas like internal lines are drawn a little bit thinner. Normally, outlining my designs is a relatively quick process. I have a feeling probably going to be one of the slowest parts of this drawing at all. Oh, and I am actually keeping these gears uh, with round teeth because apparently most of the gears in clocks use round teeth and not like the squared off teeth edges that we see in the original clink design. Is my brass color too golden? Here's something that I thought was really interesting that I learned in my clockwork research. Parts that are made of different metals actually will have less friction with each other. Uh, which is why I'm just going to make the mini gears in, in red. The idea of using red is just steampunky kind of colors. I wonder if instead I should make the middle circles green and I can make like all of the middle circles green on all of the, the gears and then maybe make the eyes the opposite color kind of thing. The colors in face give me clown vibes. Hmm, right. Or like I could make that black. Like, I guess that works too, and make the eyes green again. Alright, moving on to Clang. Oh man, all the different layers on this one, and especially on the other one, it's gonna make it really hard to, like, get all of that three-dimensionality right. Oh yeah, I have that. <laughs> I have the second layer still to go. I was like, ah, oh, I'm starting to get close to being done. Nope.
Okay, finally, I think I'm actually done with these lines. This book one is maybe a little bit too complex. <laughs> By the way, I actually, I meant to say this at the beginning of the stream, but I totally forgot. This is the redesign number 12, which means that this concludes year one of the Pokemon redesign series. I have no intention of ending this series anytime soon. Okay, so... What I need to figure out is which colors to make the weight, the big uh, semicircular weight that is in the back, and the hands of the clock. And now I have to do this. Oh, I kind of like that this actually hides the mouth for this one. I like that. At least I feel like the shading uh, of these guys is going to be pretty straightforward because they're just flat. <laughs> So let's, uh, let's see these colors. I'm okay to just go with this, just leave the eyes as the, the one green thing. So this means that I'm gonna go back to Clank and start shading. sure what to do or like how exactly I want to color or style these eyes 
like I could do a like pretty standard looking eye, uh, but I don't know. I feel like I could do something more interesting than that. And we have to remember that it also has, like, whatever we do also has to work with the V and X shaped eyes. I think that's cute. I'm not sure it'll work with a V or an X, but... Okay, let's go with this then. Which means all I have to do to finish this is color in these lines. Alright, good enough. Next! Clang. This would be a good, like... Valarian. Maybe. I feel like it might be a bit too different. Or it could be a, a, a counterpart. Yes. That's so like it's, Yeah, this is like the Galarian equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's like the rock and roller to Geodude. Yeah. Okay, there, there it is. Woo! Save. Hide. This one. Yay! <laughs> Whew. Well, I feel like there's still references to the original designs in there. Like the XI, for example, the the spike circle from yeah, from Clang yeah. Clang. Oh, and then like there's still like standard things. Like it's still essentially a bunch of gears. The, these ones have like some other things on top of that, but ultimately it's just a bunch of gears. It just this one especially, I think, is very successful because it's, I guess it's like it parts, it's a little bit humanoid because it has mm -hmm. the face, it has what looks like shoulders and arms yeah, and, yeah. and like a body. Mm -hmm. um, so it just, I don't know, it just looks like more like something relatable, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. there's a lot of character in them. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Good night. I hope you enjoy this redesign of Clank, Clang, and Clink, Clang, or as I like to call them, Tick, Talk, and Tick, Talk. Make sure you let me know in the comments what you like and don't like, what you would have done differently. And of course, if you do your own drawings, make sure to send them to me as well. I would love to see them. The options for the next redesign are Diggersby, Halucha, and Slurpuff, but I'm doing the poll a little bit differently this time. You don't have to click any links, you don't have to go anywhere away from this video. You just have to click the i-card that's in the corner there, and the poll will be right here in the video. I hope more people will be able to vote this way, and also apparently it pleases our algorithmic overlords. The next redesign stream will be on January 25th, which is a Saturday as usual, and also as usual it will be at noon pacific time right here on YouTube. I want to say a very special thank you to Lee is a Nerd, who is my newest patron, and also to Ethan Saffron, who is this month's luxury patron. If you would like to join them, you can go to patreon.com slash umbreonlibris to find out more about the tiers and the perks that I have available. I'm Umbreon Libris. Happy New Year. I'll see you in the next chapter.